Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about an alternate fallout radiation design. It's a fun Friday. I mentioned last week in my video on my favorite shipped designs that I had an alternate radiation design for fallout, but because it never, I never shipped that, it's not in that list. It also wasn't rejected. In fact, this is something I made years later because full disclosure, I was never 100% satisfied with how we did radiation in Fallout. It was just damage. Um, but later Fallouts, I was also not 100% satisfied. It became a dot or a max health loss or something that was kind of like poison. I didn't like any of this. So years later, and I'm not 100% sure when because it's not dated. It was after I left Interplay. It might have even been after Fallout 3 came out. I don't know. It was on loose leaf, undated paper. I came up with a different design that I would have loved to have used. So I thought I'd talk about it. And I want to tell you, first of all, why I like it. My goal was I wanted something fallouty, meaning it radiation is still a bad thing, but it's also a little enticing, you know, kind of like an evil playthrough. So I thought you're in the wasteland. Radiation exists. Maybe some players won't be trying to avoid it. Maybe they will actively seek out radiation. You know, kind of like some of you do with the evil playthroughs. So in essence, I could describe this as I wanted Fallout to have radiation as mutation. So when you take radiation, the more you take, the more severe mutations can happen to you. And I'll talk about what, what some examples of it in a second, but the general design was I would come up with a bunch of different ways radiation could mutate the player, and they were ranked in how far, how radioactive they got. It was just the maximum. You could get cured of the radiation later, but it's too late. You're mutated. And then that radiation becomes a new part of their character sheet. It's kind of sort of maybe like flaws from the outer worlds but this was a much earlier idea so let's let me talk about some examples i came up with so one of them would just be the radiation changes your attributes an example of that would be and it's, it's a balance thing like plus one minus one so maybe your strength goes up by one but your intelligence drops by one you just mutated you're a little stronger but part of your brain isn't working anymore i'm sure we've all seen mutants like that or maybe a slightly stronger one was plus two to endurance, but minus two to charisma. You're tougher, but people react to you worse, probably because chunks of your flesh are falling off. Maybe not. But that's a stronger one because it's a plus two minus two. You could do the same thing with skills. Maybe you do a bonus and a penalty. Maybe there's something that says your first aid gets, gets a bonus because it's easier to fix you but you take a minus 20 to barter because no one really wants to buy and sell from you because maybe you leave chunks of yourself on the things you're selling. Don't know. You could you could write the, the lore text for this any way you wanted. But it could also be a perk. It could be that you lose a perk, but then you gain another perk. And maybe there's a list of perks you can get. And maybe these are special perks that you can only get from radiation. So that's the enticement, which is like, Hey, do you want a third arm? You grow a third arm. Now you have to lose one of your perks and you can pick which one you lose. But that third arm gives you a, a third weapon slot. Whoa, what does that mean? That means you can use a two-handed weapon, a two-handed sword or a, a rifle and still have a shield. Or wield a two-handed weapon and a one-handed weapon. Or you could even have the never-before-seen Triple wield. Who knows? I'll talk, though, later why this might be a hard thing to do, but I think it sounds neat. And then, of course, you can always treat these. Since a lot of these are gain and lose, this is what traits were in Fallout. So maybe you can have, you can have a lose a trait, gain a trait. So at the cost of deleting a, a, a trait of your choice, you get a new trait. And you can pick that. And what's cool about this is because we have prerequisites, maybe some of the traits are specific to radiation and maybe they require something else you gain from radiation, maybe not. Like take the third arm. Maybe 
you can't wear armor because your third arm prevents you from putting armor on because it's in the way. Or to make it less harsh, because then you're basically saying you're never going to wear armor again. Maybe you have to pay to get the armor rebuilt to have space for your third arm. Or maybe there's a crafting thing. If the crafting system allows armor modifications, maybe there is a crafting modification that takes a lot of materials or it's expensive or whatever that lets you change armor you find in the game to have that third arm on it. In fact, you can think of all these as traits you get later. But whether or not they affect attributes, skills, perks, or they're literally leave a trait, take a trait, swap, would be how they'd be categorized. And what I like about all these is these are traits that you get later in the game. You don't get them at creation time. And let me tell you why I love this idea so much. It fits into all the design philosophy I've been talking about in this channel. First of all, radiation is no longer all bad. Unlike poison, which just hurts you, it's more like the flaws from Outer Worlds where it could lead to a very interesting character design. You may want radiation. You may make a character that you're like, hey, that was kind of a neat perk I got, or I really liked being able to alter my attributes after we started. I want more radiation. I don't want radiation resistance. I like going to places that are radioactive, like the glow. I want to seek out enemies that use radiation weapons. This is something I want. And the other reason I like this is it's a mechanic that supports lore. You've, you're playing the game and you see ghouls and you see super mutants and you see mutated monsters. Now you can experience how that happens personally and up close because it's going to happen to you. And I think this is fundamentally different than making a Fallout game where you can choose to start as a ghoul. Instead, you become a ghoul. This is something that happens as you play. And then you keep playing. And I think that's a really, really neat idea. And the reason for that is this ra this makes radiation a new source of reactivity in the game. And you know how much I love reactivity. NPCs will comment on you. Depending on how much your max radiation is, they may say things like, you don't look well to, oh my God, what are you? Because you can have dramatically different radiation uh, options that you've taken. You can also have your companion uh, mention things, but you can also have purely companion options. Maybe there's a ghoul that only joins a party member if you're radioactive, if you're another ghoul, maybe. Uh, that would be really kind of neat. Uh, end slides may mention it because if you ghoulify during the game, doesn't that mean you're immortal? Maybe you're going to get some fundamentally different end slides. Maybe the end slides for you don't cover the next few years. Maybe they cover the next few decades or the next few centuries as you see the long-term effects of all the decisions you made in the game. I mean, this kind of thing just gets me all excited because I'm like, think of all the things you could do with this. This is the kind of design I like. I love it. It has so many cool ramifications. And if you pay attention to anything I talk about on this channel... It's a mechanic that supports setting and story. And I always tell you guys, make your setting, then make your story, then make your system mechanics. And if you're doing that, this is a perfect example of why you have a system mechanic that can factor into your story, which of course factors right back into your setting. This is why you do it. So you may be asking yourself, this is a neat idea. How come I, I don't see things like this in a lot of games? Let me give you a few reasons why if this came up in a brainstorm, some people on the development team would be like, nope, nope, we're not doing that. I, I reject that idea. The first one is it's very hard to visually realize it. If you're going to have a third arm suddenly, there's probably going to be some jank if you try to put that in. You know, it's if, if you have to make a run animation and a block animation and an attack animation and a death animation that includes all those, that's a lot of extra work. And it may not all look right. There may be some uh, inner penetration, you know, between the model because this arm, this extra arm now maybe is go is going to run in some animations that are already done. Um, or you have to redo all those animations, which is a lot of work. By the way, this is fundamentally why there were no female dwarves, gnomes, or halflings in Arcanum. We ran out of time and we did, we couldn't put those animations in. So instead of either saying, well, they're all going to look 
all the female dwarves look like male dwarves and gnomes and halflings. We just said there's a a story and setting reason they're not seen in the game. So you can do that. But me personally, I always would take Jank over changing to a, what I consider to be a lesser design. And by lesser design, I mean less player agency, less player choice, less player reactivity. These are all bad things in my mind. I have a whole video called Perfect is the Enemy of Good, and I'll link it below. I don't, I'd rather make a good game with lots of the things I like than a perfect game with far less of what I like. That's my personal preference. I don't always get it. Why don't I always get that? Well, money and time, which I've said endlessly on this channel, you run out of money, which means you run out of time. And there are people who on this channel seem to constantly ignore that and think there's a magic wand you wave and suddenly f money floods back into your coffers and you can hire more people or have extra time to do something or suddenly get more of something you already have. Sometimes it's because the ideas came later. You're halfway through developing the game and somebody goes, we should do this. It's like, that's a great idea. It's too late. Because I know a lot of people like to blame managers. They should have scheduled for this. You can't schedule for a great idea happening halfway through the game when you've already done a lot of foundational work that don't support that those ideas. And then, of course, we've talked on this channel a couple times about crunch. Crunch is bad. If you want to avoid crunch, it often means taking a good idea and going, we're not going to do this by idea because it would require more time, which you don't have. And nobody's going to crunch because you don't support that. So you don't get that idea. This is explains two things. It's why you sometimes see a game. And you're like, why did they do this? Or why didn't they include this feature? That's why. Also, this is why I make design fallbacks. When I'm making my games, I often say, if we don't have time to do this, we can fall back to this thing, which is short and fast. That's why I'm not sure you'd ever see something like this radiation design ever show up because it requires changing the player's appearance, possibly changing the UI, putting a third weapon slot in your UI to support the off chance that a few players may decide to grow a third arm. There's a whole bunch of reasons you're just never going to see anything like this. Or if you see it, it'll be really restricted and feel very... Um, cautionary, like someone, they, they only did it part way. That's why. Anyway, it was a fun Friday. So I thought I'd talk about this design idea because I really like it. I'm not sure we're ever seeing anything like it, but to me, it, it checks all the boxes of this is a design that fits in Fallout perfectly. It's fun. It's giving it a little player agency and reactivity. It's just a really Fallouty design idea. Hope you like it.